it's uh, good to see you here in this cave. I don't know who you are. Maybe you could introduce yourself and let us all know what your place is in the Baldur's Gate game. I'm Lazel, a Githyanki warrior. I'm one of the companions you can recruit in Baldur's Gate 3. I'm on a quest to find a cure for the parasite that's infecting me, and I won't rest until I do. Tell me a little bit about who can I expect to encounter when I go out into the world of Baldur's Gate. You'll encounter all sorts of folk in Farron, Bob. There are humans, of course, but also elves, dwarves, halflings, all manner of races. And then there are the factions, the Flaming Fist, the Harpers, the Zentarum, each with their own agendas and motivations. And let's not forget the monsters, Mind flayers, dragons, goblins. The list goes on. It's a dangerous world out there, but that's what makes it so exciting, don't you think? Yes, I enjoy playing Baldur's Gate very much. I wonder if you could uh, direct me a little bit in uh, choosing a uh, class of character to play and any details that I might want to include in the creation of that character. Choosing a class, eh? Well, Bob, it really depends on how you like to play. Are you a fan of getting up close and personal with your enemies? Maybe a fighter or barbarian is for you. Or do you prefer to hang back and cast some spells? A wizard or sorcerer might be more your style. And then there are the rogues. Sneaky, cunning and deadly. Whatever you choose, make sure it's something that fits your playstyle. As for character creation, think about what kind of backstory you want your character to have. Where did they come from? What motivates them? The more detail you put into your character, the more immersive the experience will be. If I was to choose a wizard, what uh, subclass would I want to consider? And where would I want my skills to uh, grow in order to become a more uh, effective player in the, uh, in the game? A wizard, eh? Well, Bob, when it comes to subclasses, I'd recommend considering the evocation or enchantment schools. Evokers are all about dealing massive damage with their spells, while enchanters are masters of manipulation, bending the minds of their enemies to their will. As for skills, you'll want to focus on intelligence, of course, since that's the primary ability score for wizards. But don't neglect your dexterity and constitution either. You'll need to be able to dodge attacks and stay alive long enough to cast your spells. And don't forget to choose your spells wisely, Bob. A well-rounded spellbook can make all the difference in the heat of battle. I understand that uh, leveling up is really important, but uh, wizards don't really come into their own until they're past level 5. Is that true? Bob, you're not wrong. Wizards do take a bit of time to come into their own, and level 5 is a big milestone for them. That's when they gain access to third level spells, which is where the real power starts to come online. But don't worry, it's worth the wait. A well-played wizard can be a game changer on the battlefield. And let's not forget about the sheer variety of spells at their disposal. From summoning fire and ice to manipulating the very fabric of reality, wizards are capable of some truly impressive feats. So, stick with it, Bob, and you'll be casting like a pro in no time. Okay, thank you very much for your advice, and I'm going to continue on my quest now. Uh, you, I wish, complete success in anything you do, and uh, I hope you uh, live a long and warrior-like life. Thank you, Bob. May the road rise up to meet you, and may your sword stay sharp. I'll be here fighting my own battles and searching for a cure for this accursed parasite. Who knows, maybe our paths will cross again someday. Until then, may the gods of Farron watch over you.